Hello everyone, Master Xeon 1001 here, and in this video I wanted to demonstrate how you can create your first custom cutter using the uh, upcoming give and take method, as well as marking it as a custom shape, drawing it on the surface, using tilde to reset it, setting it up for reuse with kit ops, and everything else. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into this 10 minute tutorial. So getting started for this, I don't even need snapping, so I'll turn that off. Uh, and for this, I'll need box, so we'll just go ahead and select the box. And we're just going to draw a box. And then, you know, we're probably going to need our snapping. So let's uh, use our face dot. I'm going to hold control, and the dot appears. Hold alt, so I'll pull it the opposite direction. Um, right here, I'm going to press J in order to... Uh, turn it into a join box and we'll just extrude that however I'm gonna hold shift so it keeps it live and we'll just move that here I'm gonna tap into edit mode grab this just move it to the other side press H to hide and this is our shape so far um, you know me I love random extrusions we'll add one right here and right there um, I'll hold control we'll locate this area here except I'll press D and uh, change it to circle and we'll draw a shape here and then we'll just extrude that out maybe bring it back and just ensure that it's completely penetrating both sides um, green shape has an auto offset jump that happens to ensure that it's penetrating but old habits die hard so i like to uh, double check and make sure so right here i'm going to just select this or i'm um, sorry do a cut here do a cut here, just a couple of little random cuts to uh, make life interesting and give it some surface variation. So the next thing from here is I want to show you a uh, idea for a system that we've talked about in the past but now is closer to reality than it's ever been and that is the give and take system. So I've switched over to the make box and I'm just going to drag out a make box. However, at this time, the make box goes up. So I'll bring it all the way down, but I'll press E to extrude it the opposite way. We'll just put that here. And so just to show you this in action, I'm just gonna press GZ, uh, move it up ever so slightly, like so. And we're just gonna select the main object, select this gray box, um, and using the hard ops queue menu, we're just going to uh, make that a difference. And we will just take that and hide it. And we will add another cube. So now, to show you this in action, we're just going to uh, select custom. It's important to note that at this time, the um, eyedropper doesn't work from the top bar. Uh, we believe this may be a glitch with, it, with Blender. However, it does work in the end panel. And so we do have hopes that this will be working in the future. So for now, it's just called box. So we select box. And now we are able to draw this as the custom cutter. So in the future, I do want to streamline the ability for users to be able to create custom shapes like you see here. And so we'll do one more right there. And we've created um, you know, our first custom shape cutter. So you know, we could even take that and just switch over to box we'll just draw another gray box uh, press B twice to unbevel press E extrude it down depths about there we click to apply and me being me I just hate Z fighting so we'll just move it up ever so slightly we'll select this cube select this using a little bit of hard ops we'll connect that in and we'll press H to hide and this one is called box. This one's called box 05 now. Strange. Um, shift A, S, X, three, control A. And so we go back to custom shape and we select box. And now you can see that we're able to draw even that collection in here. So right now you're seeing me do it manually. However, we've already been in talks about uh, how to turn this into the idea of the give and take system, which is something uh, we've talked about for years. Like, hey, it'd be very cool if we can take out an area, 
and repeat it elsewhere. Uh, it's been a personal dream of mine. And thanks to this latest release, we are closer than ever. So I hope that you guys get in there, make some custom shapes and show me what you're coming up with because with every custom shape, it should give you more ideas as to other types of custom shapes and ways that we can become the greatest custom shape cutter ever. So we can even flip it the opposite way. Thank you, Proxy. And here we are just quickly cutting in a bunch of solenoids. Uh, one of the comments I received on the trailer was, hey, what about kit hops? So let's talk about uh, that real quick. So what I'm gonna do is select this and this, and we'll just click this button here, which will just apply the materials, making these real. So if we wanted to reuse these, uh, that's what kit ops would be for. So uh, one moment, I'll just open a new setup. And now that I have this up, um, we can just go in the outliner and delete everything. It makes our lives simpler that way. And that's what's on my clipboard. All right, so for simplicity on this situation, I'm just gonna delete the hierarchy of these. I'll delete the hierarchy of cutters. And now when I press Control C, I can copy this piece, go in a new file, press Alt V or uh, Alt G in order to uh, reset it. I'll even press, um, let's see, it looks like my pie menu isn't set up. Set origin to geometry, not even. We'll actually leave it uh, where it is right now. In fact, if anything, we can um, make our origin this area and then reset it and then it's actually perfect. Um, so when it comes to kit ops and, it, and saving inserts, um, all I have to do is just press Control S, jump over to my folder um, where I have my print pack that I'm working out of. I have my video pack, so we'll call this uh, DC um, Pipe Cut 1, and we'll just save that. Also, I want to make sure it's, uh, the scale and rotation is applied, so we'll just save that. Um, and I'm going to delete that shape and grab the other one as well. And we'll just paste that in here. And I'm just gonna select this face and uh, origin to selection, just so I can um, get it right where I want it. And I'm gonna use Control Shift S in order to save this as an additional file. So by saving these files, we've basically created uh, two new inserts. Um, however, in order for it to work right, in the Kit Ops Properties panel, um, because we are saved in the directory that has been marked as a um, location for inserts, we can mark this as a cutter, mark it as the main object, and save it. And then I'll use Control Shift O, jump to the previous one, and we'll do the same thing. We will just mark this as a cutter and save it. And that's it. So, I mean, I don't have any thumbnails because um, I'm just demonstrating this on a basic level. But now that we have that, I can go under vid pack and just right here, pipe cut. And we can just insert that right here. However, you see that it placed it um, not as a cutter, but basically as a mesh. So let's undo that. Let's make sure it's selected and try that again. And it appears that the issue is for one, we don't have any sharpening. So let's uh, go back to the file. Uh, let's sharpen that, save it. And also, this topmost face maybe needs to go up even more. Let's see, move it up that far, just to ensure this cutter is 100% certified successful. And we'll open pipe cut two, and we'll start off S sharpening it. And also for this one, we want to look at it from the front, Go in edit mode and just make sure this is ever so above the origin just slightly. Otherwise it will play with our sanity. So let's make a new file now. And this time when we go under kit ops, things should be looking a lot better. In fact, because it was sharpened on the insert level, it should plug in looking nice. However, it doesn't. So why is that? Well, the easiest thing would be to S sharp it. The next easiest thing would make it where kit ops 
turns on auto smoothing um, per object. So that's something I may be uh, discussing with Chip in the future, uh, seeing that, you know, presentation and first impressions are everything to me. So even things I notice uh, nuanced in videos, I always uh, continue pondering after the video. So we'll select this and I'm just gonna add an insert. And you can see that with Kid Ops, I'm able to uh, just reuse it and do a variety of things with it that I'm not able to do with Box Cutter. And this is probably where, you know, Kid Ops and Box Cutter differ, even though, you know, custom shape is something we've dreamt of forever. Um, having the ability to uh, repeat it and also, you know, conjure this stuff up at will, you know, with the right thing selected is just the way to go. So we are still contemplating how we want the uh, distribution system for box packs to be going in the future. However, more than likely, uh, we'll hand it off to another system that's already a handler of systems, in this case being KitOps. So with that, I just wanted to do a video just showing you guys how to quickly make a new insert or uh, how to quickly make a custom shape and as well as make it reusable with KitOps. So with that, we'll wrap up this video and I'll see you guys next time.